scary stories. I am 18 years old. After a particularly bad breakup, I decided that I might as well try my hand at plenty of fish. My mom met her boyfriend from there and he seemed nice enough and I figured why not. So I set up a profile and within a few days I had just a few messages from people but nothing was really working out. Then this one guy messaged me. His name was Josh. Josh was really attentive and really sweet and he asked me really engaging questions about a few things on my profile like why I liked singing so much and what I thought about some issues going on in the news recently. It was refreshing amidst the many questions of if I've ever known a real man or if I was into this particular thing or wanted to hook up. After talking to him for a few weeks, I decided that maybe it would be nice if we met in person, so we arranged to meet at a store near my house. I used to work there so it's really no big deal to me and I don't have a car so I just walked. He looked like his profile and nothing seemed really weird. He was very sweet and opened the car door for me and we went down to the creek. Now I live in the south United States in a small town so basically the only thing to do down here is to go swimming, drive around, or go to a slightly bigger town and mess around over there. I just thought of sitting down at a creek would be nice. After all, it was something that we did both enjoy. Sadly, the creek near my house was very shallow due to a rainstorm that came through and brushed a lot of the sand from the bank into the water. So we decided to go to a different creek that he said was deeper about 15 minutes away from my house. No big deal. Josh told me a friend of his named Nick was supposed to be there with his girlfriend. But when we got there, there was no other cars. I was apprehensive, so I guess he saw it on my face and called his friend. Nick said they would be coming shortly and there was nothing to worry about. But they were okay and it was fine. Nick never showed up. The date was alright. Mostly we talked basic things like what we enjoyed about each other's personality and what we turn into if we go too far. I got a red flag as we were getting out of the water. He asked me over and over and over again if this date I was going to be his girlfriend. This was only our first date and I'm not that type of person. I don't really trust people, so me being alone with this guy was a big stretch in and of itself. I told him after the date is over, I'll give you an answer, but he kept pushing me. I didn't say anything after that, I just ignored him. We put on our clothes and got back in the car. He handed me a shirt to throw on since mine was a little thin. We decided to go to the park. On the way, he just kept asking me over and over and over again to be his girlfriend, that he really liked me and really wanted it to work out. I told him that after the date, I was going to give him an answer. I usually text my mother where I was whenever I went off with anyone. I always do. I texted my mom and told her that I felt kind of weird about Josh, but she said it was probably just jitters. I trust in my mom, so I brushed it off and went to the park anyway. When we were there, he just kept asking, Will you be my girlfriend? Over and over again. Eventually, I just got sick and fucking tired of him asking me, so I said fine. I didn't really want to. I felt weird, but I still said yes. I definitely should have not done that. That was probably the biggest mistake I had ever made. After that, we went to go see Jurassic World, which was playing in another town about 10 minutes away from there. After talking to my mom, making sure it was okay that I stay a little later than planned, we headed that way. The movie was nice, but Josh wasn't. 
at the movies, he started really touchy feeling, like constantly trying to hold my hand or play with my hair or get me to sit in his lap. Normally, I like these things because it's a sign of affection, but with him, it was just really weird. I wasn't feeling it. I asked him to stop and even swatted his hand away a couple of times. We were driving back home. I got a text from my ex. It wasn't anything bad, just an asking where I had been and if I was okay. We were still okay, I guess. We weren't friends, but we weren't enemies either. He would pop in to check on me from time to time and I would do the same for him. No big deal. But when Josh saw the text, he went off. I told him it was my ex and that we were still cool, but there was nothing to worry about. It turned into something I definitely needed to worry about. It was then that Josh proceeded to tell me that his brother is a higher up of a gang in the state I live in. That weirded me out, but people lie about that shit all of the time. So I don't really take it seriously, and that's when he started threatening me. He took my phone away from me in the car, mind you, and while driving, proceeded to go to my Facebook, change my profile picture, and put it in a relationship. I asked him what he was doing, but he wouldn't let me see my phone. I was pissed, but something told me not to go off, so I didn't. Instead, I waited until he was done and texted my ex to just leave me alone, and he said okay. That was it. I was done talking to him, and it was just me and Josh in the car. Josh proceeded to threaten to slit my ex and his little sister's throat in front of me if I ever spoke to him again. What really got me is, is that I never told him that my ex had a little sister, and he named her by name. I was really freaked out, but couldn't really do anything. I was still stuck in the car with this guy. I really wanted to leave, but I didn't have a way out, so I just waited until he took me home, and he ended up talking to my parents and staying until almost 4 a.m. I wanted to go to sleep, but whenever I tried, he would try to make me lay on him. I didn't want to, but if I moved, he would pick my head up and just move me right back, so I just stopped, pretended to be asleep and wait until he left and gave me a kiss on the forehead. The next day was my brother's birthday and my mom had invited him over so I waited until he came to the house before the party started. I called him to remind him the party was happening and he was talking about how a few friends of his had gotten word of who my ex and where he lived. He started cussing under his breath and rushing I don't speak Russian, but I know cussing when I hear it. When he got to the house, he told me that he knew people who could handle him, me and my ex. I told him it wasn't necessary and to cut it out. I told him the one thing he was never supposed to do is threaten me and then I didn't feel safe and he needed to leave. He begged me to stay begged to give him a second chance, but I wasn't giving up. Something about it just rubbed me the wrong way. Normally, I do give people a second chance, but not this time. He pulled out his wallet to grab something from inside. I believe it was his lighter, and I saw his ID. His profile said he was 22, but the birthday year was off. If he was only 22, then he should have been born in the year 1995, but that is not what was on his ID. The last name he told me, Andrews, was also wrong. It was not the one on his ID. Needless to say, I was done, very done. I told him to take the shirt he had given me when we had went swimming and to leave. He got pissed off. He threw the shirt away and swore up and down that he would change that it would never happen again. I didn't believe him, not from the look in his eyes. I know that look and it's not what I was going to trust. He then tried to follow me inside and smacked me on my ass as I was going inside. 
but because I was in the middle of cooking when he showed up. I had a hot spatula waiting on the stove for him. I told my mom that if he ever showed up again to shoot him, my family doesn't play like that. I told him my parents were on their way home and that he needed to leave. He asked if he needed to go and I said yes. He said goodbye and got in his car and left. That part is fairly normal, I guess, but what really freaked me out is that I found out after he left, I googled the name that I saw on his ID and what I found was beyond disturbing. Apparently he had kept a woman who he was in a relationship prisoner for basically three months while he beat the crap out of her. She refused to get a tattoo of his name so he instead carved his initials on her back. What I read in the police report honestly made me start crying. He was a horrible person. I'm still scared because I don't know if he has people out there looking for me or my ex or his sister. But what scares me the most is that I could have been next. So Josh, let's not meet again. I recently had a very scary encounter, more like a terrifying encounter. For some backstory, I live in a small apartment complex right outside my campus with some friends. I am also a 20 year old girl. So all of my friends were always bashing on me for never meeting up with any boys or going out with them. I had gotten sick of it. I didn't want to be the little friend who stayed home and ate pizza while my friends were out on dates with boys. So I signed up for plenty of fish. Now I'm not the type of person who would say yes to any random stranger. They had to be nice looking. They had to have plenty of photos of themselves. And we both had to have at least two common interests. So with those rules in my head, I psyched myself up to join the world of online dating. Within a few days, I already had two boys I was talking to. One said he was a doctor, kind of hard to believe because he was only 20. And one said he worked as a construction guy, easier to believe. I didn't like the doctor guy. He was lying to me. But on day one, as I was getting crap from my roommates, the construction guy, who we will call Dan, messaged me on a messaging app we were using and asked if I wanted to go out for a bite to eat. I told my roommates where I was going and who I was with, you know, all the things someone should do so someone knows if you are being abducted. I even had a check-in time so that when my roommates texted me if things were good, I had to say some silly code word that meant that things were good. If I responded another code word, it meant help me get out of this. And if I didn't use words, then she would call the police for help. So I quickly dolled myself up and got ready for my date. I put my hair in a classy bun, leaving strips of it hanging down around my glasses. I put on a nice white blouse and some black pants and I was ready to go. I jumped in my car and headed out to the restaurant where Dan had chosen. It was just out of town and only 15 minutes drive from my apartment. Arrived at the restaurant and saw him almost immediately. He was wearing nice clothes and he looked like his photos. He was waiting just outside the restaurant doors for me. His eyes lit up when they saw me. He walked over to me and smiled. We chatted a little bit outside, since it was summer and not cold, and then walked inside. We ate dinner and talked about our life and things like how school was going. I got the text from my friend, but since everything was all good, I sent the code word back. Dan talked about how much he liked his job and things and all together. It was pretty nice, except for one thing. 
Dan was boring. He didn't do anything exciting or really talk enthusiastic about anything, and it was boring. It was an average date, and I honestly didn't care to go on anymore. The next day, I woke up to the feeling of my phone vibrating non-stop. I looked at it and realized it was vibrating so much that it had fallen off of my dresser. I almost laughed, and then I saw that all of the messages were from Dan. At first, they were all saying how much fun he had had, and that he would really like to go out again, but then the messages took a turn. They got violent and angry that I wasn't responding. It was even in the fucking morning. I was sleeping. I noped out of that situation. I texted him back and said I had been sleeping and that no, I was not going on any more dates with him. I was just about to block his profile on both sites when I got a final message. Watch your back, bitch. At first, I was really creeped out, but then I thought that since I had blocked him and all of my accounts were deleted, he could do nothing wrong. Later that day, I saw a text from a random number telling me how pretty I looked in my blue PJs. I glanced outside just in time to see none other than Dan running down the road. How the hell did he get my number? I thought wearily. I blocked that number and continued what I was doing. Later that night, I fell asleep pretty early and woke up to my phone text alert going crazy. It was from the number I had just blocked earlier that day. There were dozens of messages saying how I was going to get it. I quickly showed all of my roommates the messages. They all told me that I should go to the police. But since I was a stupid person, I didn't. I blocked the number again and went back to sleep. But once again, I woke up to my phone buzzing. I didn't wait. I jumped in my car and drove all the way down to the police station. Once there, they told me that they couldn't fucking do anything. And just told me, to block his number. Nothing happened for a few days. The number stayed blocked on my phone for a while. Then, the pictures started. They were pictures of my house. Of me in my house. My car. My job. I went back to the police and finally... I was able to get a restraining order against Dan. I never received any more messages from Dan again after that. I now never ever use dating websites. So Dan, I hope we never meet again. For some context, this took place in June 2018, about two weeks before I turned 18. I'm female and had just finished my A-levels and decided to join Tinder for a joke just to have a bit of fun and waste time. I thought it would be fun to put my Snapchat in my bio just to see how many people added me and I admit I enjoy the attention from guys. People added me, but no one actually messaged me except one guy. I'll keep his name anonymous. This guy was 20. I was 17 at the time and was about an hour drive away from me. This is important later. We started off just innocently chatting. The conversation was dry, but it killed boredom. So I held the conversation. One day, he randomly popped up asking me, So... When are we going to meet then? I was hesitant at first, but I agreed. In the end, after I ran it over, my parents. I invited him over to my house. I don't know what I was thinking, but I told him he could come over. He got there the next day at 9 a.m. Bearing in mind he lived an hour away from me. First red flag. I was confused as hell and wasn't even dressed for the day. Nevertheless, I invited him in and finished getting ready. We just chilled and watched films 
all day before headed off. Around 2 p.m., we chilled by the beach for a bit before coming back to the house at 5 p.m. I was expecting him to go home after that, but no, he stayed. We watched a couple more films, and every now and then, I would look over to him and catch him flat out staring at me. He would lock eyes and would say something creepy like, I love your eyes, or I'm so glad I have met you, all while knowing me for all of eight hours. I regret to say we ended up kissing a lot I felt awkward in being a naive 17 year old on her first real date. I thought that was what you were supposed to do. He left at around 10 p.m. He was at my house for 13 hours but there were no sparks at my end. I was only expecting this to be a one time thing. Nope, he turned up at 9 a.m. again, like two days later. I went along with it because I had nothing better to do. Didn't leave again until 9 p.m. At this point, I had no interest in seeing him again and didn't really feel a romantic connection with him. I will admit, I may have led him on as I never actually told him I wasn't interested. Looking back now, I should have told him and maybe the next event wouldn't have happened. My birthday rolls around. Well, the day before, he shows up at 9 a.m. again and takes me out. We go to the mall, and he buys me so much. I keep saying, no, you don't have to, and let me buy this, but he insisted because it was my birthday. I had only met this guy twice before and known him all of five minutes and he was buying me so much stuff like clothes, makeup, and uh, sexy underwear. I was still only 17. Even though my birthday was the next day, I felt like I was being treated like a prostitute. Every time we walked around, he would force my hand into his and try and kiss me. I felt so awkward. Anyway, we would get back to my house around 6 p.m. I come home to flowers from him and that he had delivered to my house. We chill in my room. I didn't know what to do. I felt trapped. I felt like I couldn't tell him to leave because he had just spent so much money on me. Anyway, he tried to have sex with me and he kept saying, Come on, didn't you have a nice birthday? And I came all this way for you. Just creepy stuff like that trying to get me to sleep with him. I just kissed him and told him I didn't want to. I wasn't a virgin, but I definitely didn't want to sleep with him. He finally leaves and just break down crying. I don't know why. I just felt so trapped. I try and be cold with him over message and stuff for the next few days hoping to scare him off. Nope. About three days after my birthday, I get home from work at 9 p.m. Guess whose car I see parked outside of my fucking house. Yep, I walk in and he's just sitting, chatting with my family in the lounge. They seem to really like him even though I'd fucking told them how creepy he was. We ended up going to a local pub and getting drinks. We get back to my house and I'm pretty drunk. He ordered me spirits, pretty much, even when I hadn't even asked him to buy me a drink. So, I suggest more drinks and crack open a bottle of bubbly I saved from my birthday. As we are drinking more, he gets quieter. I look up at him and ask what's wrong and he suddenly grabs me, kisses me, and tries to put his hand up my skirt. I immediately push him off and stare angrily at him. He then looks at me with a really sinister look and says, I deserve it. Because he had alcohol, he couldn't drive me home, so he had to stay over. I tell him I'm too drunk and I just want to go to bed. Luckily, my mother happily showed him to the guest bedroom and I didn't see him again until the morning. I woke up around 9 a.m. and walked downstairs to find him cuddling my cat in the garden. 
I tell him I had a call from work saying that they need me in about an hour and that he needs to leave. He tried to protest saying that he'll wait till I'm finished and we can hang out, but I tell him no and that I'm seeing a friend later, which wasn't a lie, but the work lie made him leave quicker and yet he still protests saying we can all hang out together. Eventually, he takes no for an answer and leaves. I cry and cry and tell my mom everything. She still likes to tell me that he wasn't that bad to this day, but she didn't have to deal with him like I did. I meet my friend and tell her all about him and that I'm going to leave in a couple of days and tell him I don't want to see him anymore. However, that same night, I get a lengthy paragraph from this guy professing his undying love to me. Some of the most memorable quotes from this are, You were my whole world. I'd be nothing without you. And I'm so glad I have met you. I can't wait to share a life together. That was it. I had to be straight up with him. I told him everything. That I didn't feel a connection to him. And that what he did to me when he was drunk was not okay. I even offered to return the things he bought, but he said no. Surprisingly, he actually apologized and said he was sorry for making me feel uncomfortable. Brilliant. Ugh, nope. He started stalking me. Anyway, who's got Snapchat will know that you can view a map that tells you where all of your friends are. You can turn it off so people can't see you, but I customize mine so that only people I'm close with can see where I am. He was one of them. I forgot to turn it off, and whenever I went out, he was there about an hour later. Remember, he lives about an hour from me. I first noticed he had followed me after I went to the beach. Same one I went to with him, with my friend, about two or three hours into our day, we were getting ready to go home. I opened my snap maps just so that I could see that me and my friend were together and show her. When I saw who shall not be named with us, his little bitmoji character probably like 200 yards away from us, seen just now, my eyes widened. I told my friend that the guy I had been complaining about all day was literally here, now with us somewhere. We both panicked and sped walked to my car and drove home. This happened two more times, once again with the same friend, when we visited a reservoir near my town. There was no reason for him to be there, so I messaged him. I asked him what he was doing at the reservoir when I got home. He said he was taking pictures, but the reservoir would have been more like a three-hour road trip for him to drive, and he had never mentioned photography to me before, so I did not believe in him. It happened a third time, and that's when I blocked him. I was with my goddamn extended family in a restaurant, yet this time he messaged me his location on Snapchat, which is a little thing you can do. He was in the fucking building. I had to then come up with an excuse to tell all my extended family, who I haven't seen for months, why we had to leave. I told my mom the truth, and then she explained to them after they were understanding. I'd had enough. I didn't even message him again. I blocked him on everything, and I didn't hear from him again. About two years ago, today, I recently moved to a new city in Canada. I was 21 at the time and single, as I just got out of a shitty relationship, so moving was a fresh start for me. In a new city where nobody knew really except my one guy friend, who we will call Mike. Mike didn't live directly in the city though, 
but we hung out a lot. Since I was single in a new city, I downloaded Tinder. Everyone my age has this dating app, or hookup app, really. I don't usually do dating apps, but I was bored and was looking for a little fun. Remember, the I don't do dating apps thing once you reach the end of the story. This is the exact reason I don't ever go on them anymore. So, I get on there and I match with a guy, who we will call Andrew. So I didn't message him first or anything, because I was doing a lot of swiping and honestly went on with my day doing other things as I just moved and needed to unpack. So a couple of hours later I check my phone and I see Andrew has messaged me several times saying hi, complimenting me, and he even sent a funny pickup line. I always appreciate a good pickup line as I have a good sense of humor about mostly everything and don't take many things that seriously. Keep this in mind too. So I replied, and we got to chatting. He eventually asked for my number, so I gave it to him. It was fine from there, really. Nothing weird was said, so he asked me out to dinner and a few drinks. I agreed, and we met three days later. We met in a public place, obviously. I saw him outside the restaurant, leaning on his car. It was a really nice car. He asked me to take a photo of it with the sun setting in the background. I said, okay, sure. Thought it was random, but whatever. We go inside and eat dinner and drink a little bit, and it was a really good date. So I invited him back to my apartment to keep the night going, I guess you could say. It wasn't super late, and we were really hitting it off. We get to my door, and I was a little bit tipsy as I drank three glasses of wine. I wasn't drunk though, but I kept forgetting my code to my door. So I had it on my phone, and I got us in. The rest of the night wasn't weird at all. I woke up beside him the next morning, majorly hungover, and we obviously had fun the night before. He left, and all was good. I really didn't want to pursue anything further, so I texted him and said, Last night was great but I'm not looking for anything serious right now. And he freaked out on me saying I was wrong for leading him on and whatever else was said. Okay, fine, fair, you can have your opinions. That's by all means fine. So I ghosted him. Just didn't really feel like talking anymore after that. As he said, degrading and subjective things I left it at that and moved on with my life, as we all would. About a week goes by, and I'm out running errands to finish the last details of getting my apartment furnished. I come home, and he's sitting in my living room with flowers and a bottle of wine. I was drinking at dinner. I was immediately like, how did you get in here? As you need a key fob, and obviously a door code. The door code thing, after I thought about it, did not surprise me. He remembered it as I had it in and out in my open phone. But the key fob, I was confused about how he got the extra one I have. He admitted to taking it when I was asleep, when he stayed the night. I was really mad someone would do that after not knowing someone for like 16 hours in person. So I kicked him out. I was a little shooken up about the situation. I blocked his number immediately after he kept apologizing. I just couldn't forgive him after doing that and invading my home, which is a safe space. Fast forward again to two weeks later, I was on a little getaway in Seattle with my friend Mike. I posted Instagram stories on the trip and I forgot until after he followed me. We matched on Tinder. This is a common thing guys my age do on Tinder. So he knew I was gone for a weekend. Mike and I are coming back to my place to drop bags off and chill for a little bit at the apartment. I walk into my apartment with Mike this time and Andrew was on my couch with a girl. 
I was completely in shock he got in again. The girl even had the audacity to say, Who are you and why are you in Andrew's apartment? I lost my mind on both of them and asked him how in the fuck he got in again. He had no made up story this time. He just flat out didn't know what to say except I didn't know when you'd be back. So I've been staying here with this bitch. Mike was mad as fuck about the situation as I told him all about it weeks ago. I demanded to know how he got into my apartment again. He said he made multiple copies of the key fob after he took it. My heart completely sank and I threatened to call the cops if they did not get out of my apartment and gave me every fob he copied. I was pissed and felt so invaded of my space. About a month goes by and I was still thinking about it every once in a while. He was blocked on every social media I could find him on. I thought he was gone until I randomly saw him places more and more frequently like it wasn't a one time thing. I saw him at least seven times and I was in public every single time. The last time, however, I was walking the seawall alone, and it was getting kind of late and dark out. It was about 9 p.m. in the beginning of June, and I stopped to tie my shoe, and when I stood up, he was right there. I fucking panicked because I genuinely felt threatened by him at this point. He kept asking why I ghosted him, didn't accept him coming around anymore, and how I could be so mean to someone who he was so into. He kept trying to grab my arm to talk to me and started yelling. I was in tears because his next moves I had no idea about. Someone thankfully heard and intervened. I told them I was not okay and they called the cops. He obviously ran and the police asked me to identify him. I gave them his name and they couldn't find anyone with that name. So now, it felt like me wondering if that was even his name. I remembered I had a picture of his license plate in my phone. He had a nice car and wanted me to take a picture of it with my phone as the sun was setting behind him. Douchey, I know. So I gave them that information and they told me the plates weren't even registered. So now, I'm mind blown by the whole thing and very confused, even a little worried. They couldn't do a whole lot with what I provided, but they said they would update me if they find anything and to contact them if he gets into my apartment again or if I saw him out. I never did, thankfully, but to this day I'm always looking over my shoulder for that stalker. I have since then moved and haven't seen him again. So to the guy who broke into my apartment on more than one occasion, let's not meet again.